Tonight on TV2 News, today marks Giving Tuesday and Kent State has been celebrating all month long. See how their efforts are giving better opportunities for students. Kent State's Finance and Administration Committee met today. We have what resolutions they discussed and their current status on projects. The Senate to vote today on a bipartisan bill that protects same-sex marriage and interracial marriage. A chance to win free food twice a week for the next 50 years. More on McDonald's new giveaway. We have all that and more as TV2 News starts right now. This is TV2 News. Good Tuesday evening, Portage County, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kennedy Gotham. And I'm Regine English. Speaking of Tuesday, today marks Giving Tuesday. That's right, and Kent State is known to celebrate in a big way. Our reporter Matt Mergen spoke to staff members to see how this year's campaign went. Hi, Matt. Hi, guys. I spoke with Lee Greenfelder from the Division of Philanthropy and Alumni Engagement about how Giving Tuesday can impact students. Giving Tuesday is a national day celebrated worldwide, but Kent State celebrates it the entire month of November. Giving Tuesday at Kent State is um, the same type of a thing, except for we do it a little bit differently, and we celebrate Giving Tuesday the whole month of November with different opportunities for people to give to the area of campus or campuses that they love most. And today on actual Giving Tuesday, the Kent State Foundation will match any gift donated. Because we've done this for eight years now, and we've had this um, giving incentive match money from the KSU Foundation. Our donors now know that if they um, make their gift right away at midnight, they can have that opportunity to get matched. So it's become a tradition where our donors wait for Giving Tuesday and they stay up. It's almost like their Black Friday where they're getting their deals, but they know if they make their gift right after midnight on Giving Tuesday, they could have the opportunity to get that $1,000 match. Students are encouraged to donate and they can contribute to the cause in many ways. There's a couple of ways that students could participate in Giving Tuesday. Um, and the first one that's really exciting is a new change that we've got this year where we have an anonymous donor who is matching students' volunteer hours to the Flash's Fighting Hunger program. So for every hour that they participate, we have um, a dollar amount being matched. So students this year could participate by volunteering their time. And of course, the second way is through philanthropy. And so both of those things are really important because I think it's part of the Kent State culture and the part of the community that we support each other and give back and try to make better for the next generation of students. And this year is on pace to be their best year yet. We see um, our amounts raised going up from 1 million to 2 million. Uh, our most recent number was 2.2 million. I think we're gonna beat that this year. So we're hoping to see um, a really great number because all of that money goes to support our students and our university, and so that's what matters. Students can go to givetokent.org to donate to their cause of choice. Reporting from the Franklin Hall studio, I'm Matthew Mergen. The biggest active volcano on Earth is erupting right now in Hawaii on the island of Mauna Loa. It's erupting in Hawaii for the first time in almost 40 years. Scientists say that the lava will more than likely stop before reaching the town located below. Well, well that's definitely unfortunate. Um, so let's look at the weather in Northeast Ohio. Good Tuesday evening, Portage County. I'm Nathan Welsh with your weather forecast. Now, right now in Northeast Ohio, more specifically in Kent, it is 49 degrees, though it feels like 47. And with that dew point at 39, that's going to give us a humidity of 65%. And we got winds from the southeast at 10 miles an hour and visibility out to 10 miles. Now, as we look across Northeast Ohio, we're seeing those temperatures around a similar range, uh, 49. Uh, the lowest up to uh, 54 up in Sandusky. Uh, not the warmest, but for that late November, early December, not bad. Now, as we look across the rest of Ohio, we're seeing that it gets all the way up to 61 down in Cincinnati and over here in Athens. That's very not bad. Uh, we're, we're still kind of seeing that transitional time out of fall into winter. 
Um, and as we look into tonight, we're actually going to see some thunderstorms and rain. Not snow, I'm sorry, it's, it's not Christmassy yet, just yet. Um, with that sunset at 4.57, just missed it by an hour or so. Um, and we, it is quite windy today, um, so get out your coats, layer up. Uh, that is all for now, however, but stay tuned. I'll have your seven-day forecast and more after the break. Portage County Job and Family Services is collecting gifts to help around 200 kids. They will be collecting toys from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. this upcoming Saturday at the Portage County Administration Building. They're asking for new unwrapped toys for kids of any age, gift cards, or a cash donation. The director said that the agency's goal is to give four gifts to each of the 172 kids in foster care. The Kent State Board of Trustees held a meeting earlier today, including a session where their Finance and Administration Committee discussed unforeseen obstacles to future plans. For instance, the financial issues involving the Aeronautics and Engineering Building Edition. As we came to the um, uh, committee uh, with this um, uh, amendment to Aeronautics and Engineering Building Edition, this was before this significant inflation started hitting in the January, February timeframe of 2022. Other resolutions included finances and the current development of renovations to Rockwell Hall. Both major projects remain in the works and the committee discussed bringing policy changes to the board so they do not have to keep going back to them to bring every approval to small budget adjustments. The committee also gave the overall reports over the past couple months in order to plan ahead for the future. Moving forward, anything discussed in this meeting must be brought to the board as a whole and be approved before going into effect. And Twitter is getting rid of COVID misinformation guidelines, why they changed the regulations and what it means for users. Former White House Deputy Chief of Staff Tony Aranato agreed to meet with the January 6th committee today, what it could mean for their investigation ahead. The College of Public Health at Kent State University prepares students for careers in some of today's most exciting health fields. Public health professionals impact lives by monitoring clinical trials, advocating for mental health, supporting active lifestyles, and more. The College of Public Health also offers open courses for any major, including its most famous course, Zombie Outbreak. Public health students can even study abroad and are encouraged to join the Public Health Student Alliance. For more information, visit kent.edu forward slash public health. Public health, solving our problems together. Welcome back. A new clothing shop has hit the streets of downtown Kent. Our own Olivia Sharp has more on the new store and its unique, unique way it's giving back to Earth. Hi, Olivia. Hi, guys. That's right. Vintage fans, listen up. There's a new store in downtown Kent that you're going to want to hear about. Are you a lover of 80s and 90s clothing, a sneakerhead, or a sports fanatic? Well, then branded at Kent is the place for you. Uh, we specialize in 80s and 90s vintage uh, clothing. So mostly crewnecks, t-shirts. Uh, we do have a woman's section here at Kent. Um, some a little bit older, some a little bit newer. And then originally we didn't sell shoes at all. We kind of branched into shoes after opening because they just go with vintage so well. Owners and brothers-in-law Brendan O'Brien and Lance Calvert opened their flagship store in Butler, Pennsylvania after retiring from the military before deciding to put down roots here in Kent as well. Where we're at in Butler, if, if you don't know, I'm sure most people don't know, it's just this random little town in Pennsylvania. Um, it's not a college town. There is a community college. The closest college is like 25 minutes and we made it work there. So we figure if we can make it work there, a college town with a lot of people is gonna be easier. But it's more than just vintage. Branded in Kent lives and works by their motto, turning clothing waste into sustainable fashion. We do have our own textile recycling facility. What we don't keep, so obviously a lot of it is newer. Um, we source for a couple different other places too, just kind of making the most out of like not ending up in landfills. And then we'll send it actually, it goes overseas to Africa. At Branded in Kent, there's something for everyone. You know, we have a lot of really awesome pieces. Everything that you're going to find is like one of a kind. You know, you're not going to find um, much else out there like even with the other vintage stores like I love having other vintage stores nearby because everybody has something different you know like even if there was one right across the street they're probably not even going to have one of the same shirts like everything is so different and so unique 
Bernadette at Kent is now open most days from 12 to 8 for all your holiday shopping needs. For more info and for online shopping, check out their Instagram at Brandon at Kent. Reporting from the Franklin Hall studio, I'm Olivia Sharp. A Cleveland woman who was missing for two weeks has been found dead in Pittsburgh. Adriana Taylor was found buried in a backyard in the Pittsburgh suburb of Wilkinsburg on Thursday night. Officials said her death is a homicide after finding a gunshot wound in her head. She was reported missing on November 13th, but her family hadn't heard from her since early October. Taylor was living with her boyfriend in Cleveland when she was reported missing. More than 700 K-12 through schools in Ohio just got money for security upgrades, including some in Northeast Ohio. Each school will be receiving up to $100,000 for protection upgrades like new security cameras, automatic door locks, and outside lighting. Some schools near Portage County that will see the money include school districts in Salon, Cuyahoga, and Stark Counties. Forecasters say severe storms could bring tornadoes, damaging winds, and hail from the Gulf Coast, especially in southern states. Over 40 million people living in southeastern Texas, up to Georgia, and then towards Indiana and Illinois are under at least a marginal threat of severe weather. People living in parts of Louisiana and Mississippi are under a severe weather warning for tornadoes into tomorrow morning. Now moving a little closer to home, the weather seems to have been heating up from the last week here in Portage County. Let's see what Nathan can tell us about the upcoming temperatures as we move into December. Is it frosty out there, Nathan? That's right. It doesn't really look like we have the makings of a winter wonderland just yet. Hello again and welcome back to your forecast. Now, looking into tonight, we're going to see some clouds that are going to turn to storms, unfortunately. Uh, got a 97% chance of thunderstorms and rain around uh, 3 a.m. there. Um, we'll continue into around 6, I believe it's uh, 1 to 9 in the morning um, with, with that rain eventually giving way to just some clouds which is going to uh, persist throughout the rest of the day. It's going to be pretty chilly, and, you know, down to 32 degrees. Still not going to see any snow yet, but uh, we are going to be seeing those kinds of temperatures. Now as we look across that 7 day forecast, we're going to see um, a pretty on and off mix of clouds and rain. Uh, however, it is still not going to be uh, cold enough for any of that to turn to snow. Um, we're, we're seeing temperatures getting um, right around 50, uh, which is not the worst. Um, I, will, I will be celebrating my birthday on Monday. Um, it's going to be kind of kind of rainy, but I don't know. Uh, I'll be turning 21, uh, so it'll be, uh, you know, not necessarily the, the perfect weather for any sort of crawling of any type, but um, it will be uh, quite pleasant. We're going to start seeing that snow come in much later, uh, probably not into uh, finals week. Um, but we are seeing that typical late fall weather, and I've been Nathan Welsh reminding you to go out and enjoy it. Right now, same-sex marriage is protected by a Supreme Court decision. So this, this bill, which will basically make sure that if, if, if the Supreme Court overturns the marriage equality at the court level, then we'd go back to the pre-court decisions and a lot of states would still have state laws that would prohibit marriages in their particular states. The Senate votes today on the final passage of bipartisan bill that protects same-sex and interracial marriage. If the bill passes, it would then go to the House of Representatives for approval before President Joe Biden could sign it into law. If the U.S. Supreme Court would ever decide to overturn the 2015 decision that legalized same-sex marriage, a state would be able to ban gay unions. But if this bill is signed into law, states would have to recognize the union in general if done in another state. Twitter announced that the company will drop its COVID-19 misinformation policy. Shortly after the virus was spreading across the U.S. in 2020, Twitter put into effect a set of rules that focused on combating, quote, harmful misinformation about coronavirus-related issues. Over the past two and a half years, Twitter says thousands of accounts were suspended for breaking those parameters. This change in policy was made in a note on Twitter's website. Thousands of demonstrators in China are calling for their government to end the zero-COVID policy. 
It's an approach top U.S. health officials have criticized. And as Amy Kiley reports from CNN. For the first time in decades, thousands of people have defied Chinese authorities, protesting at universities and on the streets of major cities, demanding freedom from the government's COVID lockdowns, as well as strict censorship. A rare show of dissent against the Communist Party's tightening grip over all aspects of life. Protesters in Hong Kong expressing their support for those on the mainland. I think everyone who has a sane mind should say something or do something to stop this unreasonable social measure. CNN has verified at least 20 protests have erupted in recent days across 15 cities on the mainland, including in Beijing and Shanghai. Demonstrators holding up sheets of white paper, symbolizing the critical social media posts and news articles that have been wiped from the Internet. China's vast security apparatus moving quickly to prevent additional protests with heavy police surveillance. The Chinese economy continuing to take a hit. They're still dealing with COVID the way we were dealing with it in 2020 in the spring, which is your choice is to shut down. And that is very disruptive to the supply chain, the internal economy. The White House treading carefully, even as it tries to mend relations with Beijing. People should be allowed the, the right to assemble and to peacefully protest policies or laws or dictates that uh, that they take issue with. In Washington, I'm Chris Wynn reporting. Former White House Deputy Chief of Staff Tony Ornato is scheduled to meet Tuesday with the House Select Committee looking into the January 6th insurrection on the U.S. Capitol. Two sources close to the matter say Ornato could shine a light on the actions of then-President Donald Trump prior to and during the riots following the 2020 election. In June, former Trump aide Cassidy Hutchinson testified under oath that Ornato, who was with the U.S. Secret Service at the time, told her that Trump demanded his protective detail take him to the Capitol on January 6. Ornato has not denied Hutchinson's claim publicly. The U.S. men's soccer team faced off against Iran today in the World Cup following much controversy leading up to the match. Can the Cleveland Cavaliers continue their tear on the league and take down the Toronto Raptors? Stay tuned to find out more after the break. The United States men's soccer team won their faceoff with Iran earlier in the World Cup today at 2 p.m. Much controversy ensued leading up to the match between the two countries after the U.S. changed the Iranian flag on social media in support of protests for women's rights. The U.S. posted the Iranian flag depicting the current World Cup standings without the Islamic Republic emblem. U.S. soccer said they did not include the emblem in the post for 24 hours to support women fighting for, quote, basic human rights. Iran state media called for the U.S. to be kicked out of the World Cup in response to the post and be suspended for 10 games. The emblem is back on the flag on all U.S. soccer posts now and no action has been taken yet against them. Qatar World Cup Chief Hassan al Thwadi on Monday told Piers Morgan that 400 to 500 migrant workers have died as a result of work done on projects connected to the tournament. He said that this is not the exact number and further discussions need to be had about the cost of preparations for the World Cup. This comes along with much criticism in Qatar from human rights groups citing changes they want in their developing labor systems. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. What's going on, Portage County? I'm Josh Aponte, and speaking of the World Cup, we have a Team USA update from their game against Iran. But first, we got some Kent State athletics news, so let's get right into it. The Kent State field hockey team is bringing home some awards. The National Field Hockey Coaches Association announced that Kent State's Maria Cambra Soler and Patricia Strunk have both received the NFHCA All-Region Honors. They were both selected to the, the West Region second team. Solaire was previously honored as the MAC Defensive Player of the Year, while Strunk was named the Co-MAC Freshman of the Year, leading the flashes in points, goals, and shots on goal. And the Cavs visited Canada yesterday to play the Toronto Raptors. Let's take a look at the highlights. Alrighty, so we're going to get it started here in Toronto. The Raptors are going to start it off. Fred Van Vliet, he's going to dump that to Thaddeus Young. He's going to put that up and in for the and one. And now here comes the Cavs. Darius Garland, he's going to dump it off to Jetty Osmond. Jetty Osmond's going to put that up and in for the easy two points. 
and he finished with nine points on the night. Fred Van Vliet, he's going to dish it off to Thaddeus Young, and he is going to find Juancho Hernan Gomez for the bucket. And the Raptors, again, Pascal Siakam, he's going to find Thaddeus Young for the and one again, and that will put them up by 10 late in the third. Evan Mobley, he's going to fake that pass there. He's going to drive it to the paint. He's going to go up and in. That's an and one for the Cavs. And here comes Fred Van Vliet from way downtown in Toronto. That's a three. That will seal the deal. The Cavs will fail to scrape the barrel, and the Cavs will lose 100 to 88. Evan Mobley and Darius Garland, they had a night both scoring 18 points each. That's all I have for now, but make sure to follow us at TV2KSU Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. For TV2 Sports, I'm Josh Aponte, and go Flashes. McDonald's fast food restaurants in Finland are upcycling old work uniforms to give workers a new look. More on the outfit change ahead. The gift that keeps on giving, how does free McDonald's twice a year sound? Twice a week for 50 years sound. The fast food giant is offering a chance to win what's called a gold card on December 5th to the 25th. Each purchase of at, at least a million dollars on the McDonald's app gets you an entry in the drawing to win one. Three cards, three winners will get the card and each winner will get three extra cards to give away a total of 12 winning cards. Vane, a Helsinki-based fashion label, has unveiled a new uniform clothing line for McDonald's employees in Finland. The company used actual uniforms from the fast food giant and upcycled them into new garments with a little more flash and style. Officials say this was a way to recycle the old clothes and have a little fun. The new workwear will be raffled off to Finnish McDonald's staffers. A representative for Bain said McDonald's crew members won't actually be able to wear the new uniforms while on the clock. That's very interesting. I know that the McDonald's card thing, I feel like a lot of places have been doing that. Didn't Wendy's just do one uh, a little while ago for like a Frosty? Oh, yeah, they, they did it with yeah. their keychain, the Frosty yeah. keychain, yes. Yeah. I personally, I would not be interested in McDonald's because I'm mm -hmm. vegan. So uh, maybe if they, maybe if they had a vegan with, option, I yeah. might be, but probably not. What do you guys think? I think it's very interesting um, and definitely opens up like a new gateway to a possible <laughs> new Super Size Me documentary. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's I would use it to get ice cream because their ice cream is underrated at McDonald's. And what do you think? As a college student, any, I'll take anything I can get. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us. For updates on all of these stories and more, visit our website at countwire.com. And our social media on all platforms at Kent Wired. I'm Josh Aponte. I've been Nathan Welch. I'm Regine English. And I'm Kennedy Gotham. Have a great night, Portage County. This is Portage County's TV2, broadcasting from the campus of Kent State University. Streaming online at kentwired.com.